Alrighty, it is paper mosaic time. So here is an example of what our project is going to be completed. And then this will be a demonstration on the steps that in order to complete and get to this point. So um, some things to think about. First of all, think of something that is important to you, have some, has some sort of significance to it. And then that's where you're gonna be drawing your brainstorming ideas from. Um, I always suggest at least three different ideas, um, all relating to the same theme. All right, try out different backgrounds, uh, try out different layouts. Maybe you really like this style, but how can you change it? Or maybe you draw it three different times, um, but then you change your background or you change the coloring or you change the layout. Maybe you draw it at an angle, maybe you draw it sideways, up and down, doesn't matter. But the more you try out different things, the better your project is going to be because you've then tried out how to do that. All right, from there, you can take either your best idea or a combination of your best ideas, and then you're going to draw your final, all right? Um, so for your final, you just start out by doing simple outlines. Essentially, you're creating yourself a coloring sheet of sorts. Um, you're just doing outlines. And then I always go through and label what it is that I'm going to be gluing where, because then I don't have to worry about screwing it up. It gives me a guide. Um, and then as you go along, you'll kind of figure out what you need and what you don't need. And the more you do this, the easier it gets. All right. Now, the biggest thing that you want to keep in mind is keep it simple. If you get too detailed, this is going to be very difficult. Like these details might get to be a little, a little tricky in there. All right. Um, so, but like even like, you know, if I were to add these lemon wedges into a picture, depending on the size of the paper, that might get to be difficult. All right. So consider that keeping it simple is usually a good idea. All right. I have a couple other things that you can consider. All right. So this is um, an in progress pr project. We have to think about shading is very difficult. All right. So in order to create a golf ball, all I did was just add these little divots, but it's not going to look the same as having a regular golf ball. <clears throat> okay. And now, but for what I can do for shading is I can have my entire background green, like green grass, but then this could be a dark green and this could be a light or regular green. So it'd create a shading effect of sorts, but subtle shading is not going to work. So you have to really think about how you can simplify. Um, also, the smaller the area, the smaller the shape, the longer it's going to take you. So that's something to consider. Also, um, if you notice on my one brainstorming idea, I have this solid purple background. Um, if you make your project too simple, it's not a very interesting project. Now this one, I had this solid yellow background, but it works because I have all these different colors in the background. So I decided to take the idea of the stripes with the simple background to create this one. I kind of created a sunbeam effect. All right. Um, another thing that you can do, this is another in progress project. And so like, instead of just doing a solid brown, I did a mod podge of, of random kinds of brown. So light brown, dark brown, medium brown, so on and so forth. What I could have done too is maybe started with a layer of dark browns around the edges and then go to the next value of brown and then the next one and then end with light or go in the opposite order. So um, usually using different colors can also help make a little bit of interest into a focal point area. Now these petals are plain yellow with a different colored outline, which makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, but then these outside petals were going to be orange or yellow and orange. So I would do this pattern, but with yellow and orange in here. So it would keep it different from the one that it's next to. All right, so other things to consider. Now you'll see this when I'm doing uh, this project, but I always start with any detailed areas. So I would start out, if you wanna do an outline somewhere, start with that because then it's just to fill in the space, right? Like my eyes and nose here, the outline of the hat, I started with those things. And sometimes it might be a little bit different than coloring in a normal page, 
but you'll find it then tends to be a lot easier to do your object and then fill in the space around it. All right, so that's kind of my suggestion. I also like working from the front and then going backwards. I think that that's also easier, um, but you'll find out what works out best for you. But a lot of art is trial and error, so let's give it a go. So now you're ready to create some materials you need. You got scissors, you need your paper, construction paper for your squares. You got glue. I don't recommend glue sticks. I, I like liquid glue, but either will work. So pick out the colors that you need first, depending on the section that you're focusing on. If you're doing a thin line, I like to start out by doing something like this. And then you stack them together, your, your pieces together, and now you're cu cutting double the paper. Um, you can always do more if you need more, kind of depends. Now you start with just doing a line over where you want. And then if you actually get a little bit of glue on your finger and you can kind of pick up those pieces a lot easier and set it on the glue line. Now make sure that you're leaving those gaps because remember that's kind of part of creating that mosaic tiling effect. If you don't have gaps, it's not gonna look very good. If it's too big, you're not gonna get the idea of what your picture is supposed to look like either. So just keep on adding them. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but with orange, since I'm doing those lines with orange. So you can see I'm stacking the paper again, but I needed more paper this time. So I stacked more pieces. Keep in mind if you stack too many, sometimes it can get a little bit messy. So you'll sweep your pieces together and then it's just creating that same process again. The lines and then adding the pieces to them. So here you can see that there's just some really tiny areas and this is where when you get really detailed and you're trying to do a higher quality project, you need to cut those pieces pretty tiny. So be careful when you're doing that. Sometimes up at that top area, you can see it's just kind of gonna be a weird shape. So sometimes you have to get a little creative, but you cut it into that weird shape, shape and you place it and sometimes there's gonna be overlap and that's not the end of the world, but just do your best. Now I'm gonna cut my seeds, so if I want them to be similar, I just put one on top of the other and use it as a stencil of some sort. And I do not have to follow the same lines that I have on the actual project. I kinda of changed it up a little bit for my seeds just cause I didn't like <laughs> where they were placed. So, and that's just fine, that's part of art. So you have a couple different options when you're gluing individual pieces like this. Some people like to do the individual dot where you glue on the back. I like to glue on the paper because then I don't feel like I'm gonna drop it. Just make sure you kind of give them a good wiggle, spread that glue around so the paper doesn't curve up on you. Now something I hadn't thought about is that the fruit of my lemon is going to be yellow and the rind of my lemon is going to be yellow. So those are gonna to blend together. So in order to separate them, I wanted to do a line. I thought the black would stand out too much and the orange would be too similar to the other things. So I wanted to mix it up and I did a pattern of orange and white. So think about different ways that you can maybe do that, kind of add a little bit of fun and interesting parts to your project. I'm gonna do my the rest of my outline though in the black though, cause then it kind of ties together and really creates a proper outline. And then that way it'll match also the larger lemon as well. So now I'm on to doing the yellow part of my lemon. I have all my details done, so now it's just to fill it in with the yellow, which makes this process a lot easier, especially when you're working with little details. So I only glue areas that I know that I'll have build to finish, and so you wanna work quickly with this still. So I fill in the entire area with the glue, 
Sometimes you'll find after cutting some squares that you'll have to still cut them down in size, but you wanna work quickly so that glue does not dry on you. Now I'm looking for an area that I can still have a gap. Sometimes if that glue is still wet, you can actually still move your paper around and kind of wiggle it to make everything work. But just be careful with that. And then sometimes you need to cut different shapes. So this is once again where you just got to be careful and you got to be methodical. So check out to see how I do a lot of these pieces and then doing the inside of the lemon. And best of luck. Here we go. So you can see that when you're filling in the space, sometimes you have to get some pretty tiny pieces to make it work. Um, unless you're just very accurate, then that sometimes is a gift as well. But now I have my slice of lemon completed. So I have the frontmost piece done. Then I go to, go to that main lemon, which is behind that. And then I go to the background. So I'm actually working with the most complicated first and then I work and get easier things done as we move back. So make sure that you're cleaning up when you are done, that you, um, if you rub your fingers together, that'll help get any remaining glue off, sweep it off of your project. You don't wanna let that sit and dry on there. Any pieces of paper that you will not need anymore, you can get rid of. Any pieces that are able to still be used, then you want to make sure that you are saving those. If you need uh, like a little Ziploc baggie, you can see me and I can see what we can find for you there. But otherwise, make sure you close your glue, make sure you clean off the end and store it upright so it stays nice and clean. So best of luck, here we go, paper mosaics.